welcome to The Crafty Tinkerer. I'm Nicole, and we have lots to talk about this week. There were a couple of farms that I visited on Saturday for Worldwide Knit and Public Day, and I finished one of my knitting projects, and then I'm going to show you the very slow, snail-like pace I am knitting my sweater and my socks. <laughs> Buckle up! <laughs> So this week I have knit another two rows on my sweater and I ended up using my new stitch markers because these rubber bands, now that I um, have so many stitches, they, while I was pushing, you know, up onto the needle, they were going underneath and moving. So my new Harry Potter stitch markers from the bracelet are on there and um, yeah I have not finished this motif yet with this uh, purple and brown but once I do I'll figure out what colors I'm going to use next. So far this is what I have. <laughs> um, And my sister and my husband think that I should just cast off here and walk around like this. <laughs> so who knows, maybe for Christmas one year, the two of them will receive just a yoke from me instead of an entire sweater. <laughs> so that's my sweater progress. Pretty soon I will be um, creating armholes and I am really anxious about seeing if my steak stitches are actually in the front center. I think right now that is the most nerve wracking part for me. Um, I know I can figure it out and make it work if they're not, but it's just going to take a lot more calculation from me and a little bit more of changing the pattern. and. I had hoped to be able to just follow, mostly follow the pattern as written with a few minor changes here and there. So we'll see. Hopefully next week I will have that. I will be able to start the armholes and show you guys and uh, get rid of this anxiety about whether or not the steak is going to be in the front. Here's my other whip. It is my socks. I think I've done about three more rows on the socks too this week. Um, I've kept them in the car and in my purse. I went out to coffee with my grandmother last week and I ended up doing a row while we were out then. So slow going, but they're going. Now for my finished object this week, I did finish the Milo vest, which I converted into a dress. Um, here it is. There are a couple of things, like I said, that I would change if I were to do this again, but I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. Uh, I love the little ruffle at the bottom. I only doubled my stitches to get that little bit of a ruffle. I was reading you know, in, um, I think it was my Vogue knitting book actually, that you could quadruple the stitches. No, maybe it wasn't the Vogue knitting book. I, I had read somewhere that for an extra ruffly ruffle, you quadruple your stitches. And I was thinking about doing that, but I'm glad that I only doubled them because I think it came out perfectly for what it is. So, there you go. My friend in Florida received her hat Dana um, and her hat that I made for her. So I was glad that that got there okay. And I'm thinking now that I'm finished with that dress, I'm probably going to cast on a third hat Dana out of the sock yarn, the whole knit and caboodle sock yarn that I got at the Perfect Blend uh, yarn shop in Saugerties a couple weeks ago. So. I'm still wearing my hat Dana almost every day. Um, but now 
it's getting to be more humid and the yarn that I picked is heavy. So I'm, I'm looking forward to having a lighter weight hat Dana to wear around, but I really love it and I can't wait to finish it. Although I'm not looking forward to having another fingering weight project. I think I'm torturing myself with all these fingering weight projects because they take so long and sometimes you really just need a quick project for that feeling of whoo I did another thing so I don't know we'll see maybe I'll save it for once I finish my socks <laughs> but I really want another hat Dana so um, I don't know guys I don't know I have quite a few other projects in mind. It's always, you know, trying to figure out which one you want to do next and the priority level of them. Um, so I don't know. The sweater, I still have, let's see, about four months. The next sweater I do will definitely be a DK or an Aaron Waite sweater because fingering weight is taking a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I mind the color work though. I really do prefer doing color work knitting. So most of my stuff will be color work. I think uh, just plain knitting without having a pattern coming out doesn't keep me interested. Um, there's got to be a little bit of a pattern in it. And I'm not that great with lace work yet. So color work is where I'm at. Usually when I make my Fair Isle Fisherman's Caps, I wait until the end to weave in all the ends, um, but I know that with this sweater, there's no way I'm going to want to weave in all the ends at the at the end of the project. So it's long enough now that I feel like, okay, this would be a good point to weave in my ends. Um, before I started knitting color work, I think that was the thing that intimidated me the most was how to join in the other color. And uh, some of the ladies on the Fair Isle Fisherman's Kept group on Facebook were really great at giving some pointers and making it not so intimidating. And really, I just, I just tie them in and then knot them and weave them in. That's what they said that they do. So um, one time... In my sweater, I did, oh, what is it called? The spit slice or spit splice or something. You know, because it's 100% wool, you can fray the ends a little bit and then use saliva to rub them together to make one long piece of yarn. And then you don't have to worry about weaving in ends. I was able to do it during one new color change, but I couldn't get it to work after that. So I'm gonna have to keep practicing, but it slowed me down a little bit. So I continued with what I knew. There was no knitting for me on Saturday, June 8th, because I was shopping instead. Um, I went on Facebook and I found a couple of events nearby that were happening for this event. And so I put down that I was going, got there, and it turns out that they were having specials for Worldwide Knit and Public Day, and no one was actually there knitting. Um, we did end up driving by a group, sitting out on a porch of a library, they were knitting. But at that point, we were already on our way for ice cream. Couldn't disappoint our daughter <laughs> by stopping to knit. So maybe next year I'll actually do some knitting. Uh, I do want to talk about, though, the two farms that we ended up going to for the day. The first farm we went to was in Milan, New York, which is just a little bit outside of Red Hook. And for those of you who are familiar with Rhinebeck, New York, Red Hook is just a bit north of Rhinebeck. Morehouse Farm has merino sheep, so they sell merino wool. They had a very nice selection of yarns. They had 
a lot of kits put together with patterns. They had uh, knitting supplies. They had knitting needles and buttons and notions and, you know, all sorts of different things. <laughs> When we first arrived, we were given a postcard and on the back of the postcard, you could write down your favorite colorways and the, your favorite yarns that they had. Um, they had lace yarn, two-ply, three-strand, bulky, and gaiter, which is um, a high-twist yarn. And I really loved some of their variegated colorways, but I ended up buying a hand-painted yarn um, in purple and brown. They had uh, Meet the Sheep, and the sheep were adorable. We were also greeted by the farm dog, and he tried coming home with us. We've got this little guy who's trying to get into our car with us. <laughs> Just wants to come home. Aww. The second place we went to was also located in Red Hook. It wasn't that far from Morehouse Farms. It's called the Hudson Valley Sheep and Wool Company. And when we got there, we weren't sure we were in the right place because there was no one knitting outside. We went in anyway. As we got out of the car, we were greeted by Dex, who is one of the dogs um, on the farm. There are two dogs. Dex is the friendly greeting dog. And then they have another one named Luna, who is the guard dog. And she is not friendly, and you should never try to pet her. If you ever make your way over there, don't try to pet Luna. Give all your love to Dex. <laughs> Dex will even roll over and want you to rub her tummy. So she came running outside to greet us. We walked over, you know, as dogs do, they go out the door, in the door, out the door, in the door. She wanted us to let her back in. So we went in and we were greeted by Jamie and Jamie was able to introduce us to Mary who actually owns the farm there. We were the only ones there at the time, so we were able to have a really great conversation with Jamie and Mary. Mary was working on a new felting project, and she was able to give our daughter a little bit of advice because our daughter was having some trouble with needle felting a couple of years ago. Um, so I asked the question, and Mary was able to help her out a little bit with that. So she's excited now to try needle felting again. She was having an issue with the needles breaking all the time. Um, and, you know, at 10 years old, <laughs> you don't have much patience to just sit there and then have your needles break constantly. I mean, she went through an entire pack of needles. So um, she appreciated that. Mary has Shetland and Icelandic sheep on the farm. And so that is what kind of yarn they sell. Um, it's all located on a shelf at the back wall. We went in and we were able to walk around the store. They have roving, they have their own yarn, and then they sell some other yarns um, like Malabrigo. <laughs> And they have finished products. Uh, Mary does weaving, and so they had some of that. They had some felted products from other people who work there. 
they had maple syrup and honey, beeswax candles, knitting supplies. Um, I found out that they actually carry the chow goo needles. So now instead of going on Amazon, I can just drive over there and pick up supplies that I need. Um, the yarn is really great. It's really affordable. And you can tell that Mary and Jamie love what they do. Um, so once a month, they hold what they call a spin-in. And anyone is welcome to join. It's on the last Sunday of every month. And they just get together. Any fiber artists can come and do their craft and sit and chat for a bit. That's all I have for this week. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more of my videos, there will be a button down here to subscribe. Make sure you click the bell when you do so that you receive notifications. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Have a great day.